technology enhances, one of the downsides can be the elimination of jobs that have been previously done by humans. From increased use of robotic automation to the online shift in stores, there's a lot of examples of companies, actually even entire industries, that really have accelerated their technology adoption during this pandemic. The problem is there aren't enough people to do these jobs. So Amazon, Microsoft, Intel have been reskilling and upskilling their employees, which sounds like corporate mumbo jumbo, right. but goes to the fact that we have all sorts of new job opportunities because of the fact that we're going to more automation, more robotics, all of this. Right. The problem is that we don't have the skills to match up with it. And no. so they're trying, we've tried to recruit, right? We've mm -hmm. tried to get people to take STEM programs and- And, and, and education and college but and the reality is, schools, like, yeah. You're just never gonna catch up. You're never gonna get the number of people you want. So they're trying to retrain some of the people who maybe are in jobs that you would think of as, you know, uh, lower skilled or jobs that are sort of being phased out by automation. What you think about could be a lot of customer service jobs, you right. know, whether that be cashiers or um, sure. wait staff. But you talk about this idea of like reskilling and upskilling. It and sounds good. It sounds good, right? Because reskilling is yeah. actually learning entirely new skills. Upskilling is this idea of learning additional skills. And right now, there's a huge tech gap. In fact, some studies estimate you are going to have to retrain 120 million people over the next couple of years, which is a massive sure. undertaking there as we have more of this technology really just sped up by the by the pandemic. Here's the problem though, the tech companies, to their credit, they're paying for this in many cases. Mm -hmm. They're taking a leadership role in, in really reaching out, especially to uh, diverse employees and saying like, we need you to help do these jobs. The problem is like, you still have to do your main job. You still you have to do your main job. You, so, right, so when are you supposed to do this? Right, and that's the thing is that to be able to do this, you need to have a way for people to continue to be paid to do this. And you, then you look at things like, you know, switching jobs. You, you may not have the transportation to get to a different place. Sure. You may not have the childcare to do this, to essentially go back to school. Um, and so what these companies also have to do, in addition to providing these opportunities, is make accommodations for people so they yeah. can do that, perhaps at their current workplace or perhaps getting a paycheck to do that and then coming on on into the job there. It, it is, we are in the middle of uh, one of the most dramatic reshaping of the workplaces mm -hmm. uh, since, you know, when we went to the assembly line. Right. And it's painful. Mm -hmm. It just is. Like the reality is not everyone can be retrained and jobs will disappear. New opportunities come up. Uh, but it is interesting. I, uh, I don't recall a similar example historically mm -hmm. of private industry saying, and in a way, Heather, aren't they saying like that the regular educational system is failing them? Mm -hmm, that it isn't working, that we don't have. It's not training that people we for don't the job. Have that there. Yeah. And you know, the other fear is too, is that they may not replace those jobs at the same rate. So right. you may have fewer right. people even taking over these sure. new jobs. And that, that are, there again, that's another concern. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's what happens, right? Life moves forward and mm -hmm. that is, you see jobs come and go over time. Right. Um, mm -hmm. But it's painful for sure. Let's talk about Christmas. A lot of people may be making kind of last minute decisions about what they're going to do, mm -hmm. what the meal's going to look like. Yeah, and for a lot of families, it's probably going to look a little bit different than what you're used to. Perhaps it's a smaller crowd of diners, maybe similar to what you had for Thanksgiving. So Bobby Flay found himself in this situation. I was watching this uh, story as it was going on on CBS Sunday morning. It was fascinating. He, he was sort of gave his uh, experience of what the holidays have been like for him, what 2020 has been like for him. So he came up with this cool idea, this, this playbook of meals <laughs> Um, if you are not going to go with, you know, the full turkey and yeah, stuffing and mashed is. potatoes and greens and all of that. Right. Mm -hmm. it we was always, cool. my family has always done Christmas Eve is like an appetizer night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like you go to Costco or Sam's Club and get all the frozen out because you don't want to be working that hard on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Flay's idea was an Italian night, mm -hmm. right. which I think a similar vibe, right? You can mm -hmm. cook a lot of pasta or a lot of lasagna or whatever and not have that 
you know, you can still socialize right. and have fun. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what my family does. Or does. We always have lasagna, stuffed mushrooms, mm -hmm. Italian, uh, like mushrooms with a sausage and, and cheese and everything. It's not, they're amazing. Um, but it's more of that type of thing. And then even for Christmas dinner, there was always some kind of a pasta thrown on the pasta dish in, in addition cool. to. Oh, yeah. Grandmother would make duck or turkey. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. depending on what it was, but we always had many, many dishes, including a lot of desserts. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> so the good many. stuff, Riley. So, so if this is Bobby Flay. So he's not just going to say, OK, go Italian, go to the spaghetti and meatballs. He says, <laughs> go the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So when yeah. he was making All this right. dish, if you see the story, it's so good. He's got squid and crab and shrimp mm. and mussels and then he starts roasting this uh, tuna steak <laughs> yeah. sure. nice laid back all in Christmas there. Like, uh, right. well if you're Bobby Flay keeping yeah, it that's, chill that's great totally um, <laughs> that dish anything with shrimp and scampi like anything right? looks good like that, I do yeah. like that that oh, looks yeah. beautiful oh. mm -hmm. all right and then what's the Christmas dinner approach uh, we, you know what he, what we do, ham. We you do go ham. Okay, ham. Yeah. Ham. All right. Yeah, and yeah, that's that was three, his recommendation. Kind of three options, right? Ham, turkey, or prime rib. Mm -hmm. I do like in Christmas. There, I feel like there's a little more freedom, right? Where mm -hmm. people do special things for their family. For Thanksgiving, you sort of feel like, all right, we're making turkey. Like mm -hmm. we got to do it. That's right. what Thanksgiving is. But with Christmas, I always feel like people kind of take that nod to that nod to whatever their heritage yeah. might be. Right. It's kind of fun. A lot of times too, when I lived out of the state, like from home, when I lived in California, and even uh, down in the south in Atlanta for a while, I always did friends. It's kind of like a friendsgiving, but friends Christmas. And mm. so I would always host, um, and I would do it, make it candlelight. So I'd have all the lights out and tons of candles, and everybody come over. But I always had somebody bring a dish from your family, like a heritage dish oh, fun. of what oh. you would have. So it's kind of yeah. like you get to try everybody's, you know, kind of their food. So yeah. it's always fun like that. That's cool. And the big thing that Bobby Flay said that I really appreciated was, how about this? For this year, don't cook your sides. You know, order out for that one. Uh, from help out local restaurants, yeah. whether it's your sides and your desserts, um, and have them sort of be part of your, well, your You better get cracking on that. Yeah, you got to get cracking on that. So that's that out. week in between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Right. <laughs>